Chevrolet's small cars have historically been a letdown. The company has long made great trucks, SUVs and large cars, yet models like the Cavalier and Cobalt were rarely best in their class. That all changed with the introduction of the Cruze in 2010. It suddenly seemed like Chevy understood what compact car buyers wanted. Now we're on the second generation Chevy Cruze, which is lighter, more spacious and better equipped than its predecessor. But is that enough for it to take on its increasingly stiff competition? How does it look? This is a really fresh, modern look. I like the sharp lines, low nose, and almost coupe-like roofline. This cruise also has the RS package, so it gets a slightly sportier body kit, a little trunk lid spoiler, and 18-inch wheels. The most awkward angle is from behind. Between its high bumper and blacked-out trim, it looks like the cruise rides as tall as a crossover in the rear. On the other hand, the hidden third brake light at the top of the rear window is a really slick touch. How's the storage? In terms of objective measurements, the cruiser's trunk is about mid-pack among compact sedans. In real life, it's usefully wide and deep with a nice low liftover height. You can fold the back seats easily if you need more storage space, although because there's a little lip when they're down, that kind of cuts through on the pass-through space. The only annoying thing is that the bottom of the parcel shelf is unlined, so you see exposed metal, wires, and speakers there. Cabin storage is competitive with other compact sedans. This center console cubby and the glove box are both big enough, plus you get generous door pockets and two cup holders front and rear. There's also this slot that you can stand your phone up in, and it has wireless charging too. Is it roomy? Because the 2016 Cruze is larger than before, the front seats feel almost as roomy as you might expect from a mid-sized sedan. Even someone taller than my 5'10 frame will be comfortable. The back seat is a mixed bag. It's much roomier or more comfortable than the old Cruise's really cramped rear seating, but there's still only just enough headroom for someone like me, so I'd end up slouching on a longer journey. How does the interior feel? I really like how the steering wheel feels, how all the switch gear feels, all the trim, and especially this leather lining on the lower dashboard. There is a lot of grain black plastic everywhere, but that's pretty common for all cars in this extremely price sensitive class. One thing I don't like, there's really uneven panel gaps down here in the center console, but that could just be on this specific test car. Is it well equipped? Well, this one is. It's the top spec premier trim level with a few option packages. So you get leather seats, remote start, wireless phone charging, navigation, a sunroof, and so on. But if you're buying a low end cruise, you won't get quite so many goodies. It's not until you step up to the LT trim level that you get LED running lights, chrome exterior trim, and alloy wheels. On even the cheapest models though, a backup camera, 10 airbags, keyless entry, OnStar, and Bluetooth all come standard. How's the infotainment system? This is the optional seven inch MyLink system, and it's one of my favorites in this class of cars. Big, clear graphics and a very logical menu system make it easy to do everything from playing music and changing vehicle settings to using navigation or making phone calls. You also have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay compatibility if you prefer, although I wish there was more than one USB port for charging gadgets. It's also great to have these physical controls if you don't want to use the touchscreen. Is it a good daily driver? The main thing you want out of a compact sedan is for it to be easy and pleasant to drive, and the cruise scores big on both points. The ride is really comfortable. The suspension doesn't really filter out a lot of noise from potholes and other impacts, but it does stop you from feeling them too much within the cabin. It's also really, really quiet on the move, and you've got great visibility, especially thanks to these cutout windows in the A-pillars. I really like how smooth and quiet this 1.4 liter turbo engine is, even when you're getting on it to get on the highway. It also comes with an engine stop-start feature as standard, and unlike the systems in most cars, you can't turn it off. That sounds like a problem, but watch what happens when you use the stop-start. Not too much, it's really unobtrusive, and that's not much of a penalty to pay for saving a little bit of fuel. 
Is it fun to drive? Just like your friend who gave up eating pizza and started running 5Ks, the new Cruise is lighter and as a result, it's a lot more athletic. It's about as sporty as you're gonna get in the compact sedan segment, aside from the Mazda 3. This Cruise, being the premier version, also comes with what Chevrolet calls a Z-Link. It's basically a Watts link in the rear suspension that just tightens the handling up a little bit. That, coupled with the 18-inch wheels and tires we've got because of the RS package, makes this car feel really planted through turns. How's the fuel economy? 30 miles per gallon city and 40 miles per gallon highway makes this one of the most efficient small sedans you can buy. The Cruze LS and LT actually get 42 mpg highway, but the Premier is heavier and has bigger wheels, so annoyingly it gets a slightly lower highway rating. How much is it? This Cruze Premier, which has several option packages, is $29,000. Before you whine that it's super expensive, don't forget that most modern compact sedans can be optioned up to that level. The Cruze L starts just below 18,000, but that's a real stripper model. I'd want to buy at least an LT, which will set you back 22,000. What are the negatives? There isn't much to dislike about the Cruze. Some of its rivals, like the Honda Civic, give you more trunk space and more back seat room, but otherwise it's really competitive in terms of efficiency, equipment, and driving dynamics. Who should buy it? The new Chevy Cruze is a great option for anyone shopping in the compact sedan segment. If you regularly need to carry bulky items like dogs, bicycles, or baby strollers, then you may want to wait for the Cruze hatchback. Otherwise, the Cruze is a great option for anyone who needs a satisfying and efficient daily driver. If you liked this why buy, you should subscribe to our YouTube channel or check out all our other car review content at motorone.com. And if you've got any comments or suggestions of cars you'd like to see us review in the future, leave a comment below.